Hi everyone, Dan from On One here. In this video, I want to show you how to use the power of perfect layers to combine three images together to create one kind of super image. This happens a lot if you're a landscape photographer where you're standing in one scene and you see great parts that would all combine together to create the perfect image. In this case, I have an image of some waves, a rock offshore called Haystack Rock, and a sky. Now these were actually all taken at the same time in the same location. This is almost like a panorama. This is what you should see if you're looking to the left. This is what you'd see if you're looking to the right. And this is what you'd see if you're looking straight forward. What I want to do is kind of compress those down visually so that I can have the waves in the foreground, the rock as my center of interest, and the great looking sky all combined together. The th three weren't going to happen together on that day, so let's show you how we can put them together. Up here inside of the Perfect Browse module, I'm just going to select the three images and I'm going to click on the layers in the Layers module. Now if you're in Lightroom or Aperture, you do the same thing. Just select the three images and then go to Plugin Extras and select Layers. Then I'm going to select the Add as a Layer option. And I'm going to make this a Photoshop file. I'm going to leave it in Adobe RGB in 16-bit. It'll now take those three. These happen to be raw files from a Canon 5D Mark II, and it's going to combine those together into one layered Photoshop file. And over here in Layers, if we look, let me close this drawer on the left just to give us a little bit more room to look. Here we go. Let's actually name these layers so we can keep track of them. The bottom one, let's turn the eyeballs off, are the waves. So I'm just going to double click. We'll name that waves. The one in the middle is the sky. I'll just name that sky. And We'll name the upper one rock. There we go. Now, all right, let's start with the waves at the bottom. That's kind of our foreground. That's the one we're going to use the most. Let's use the retouch brush and we're going to get rid of all of the dust that happened to be on the camera sensor. This was a really dusty camera. I'm just going to get rid of all these guys. I'm not worried about the sky that much because we're actually going to replace it. I'm really just looking at the waves and the sand in the foreground to make sure I get rid of all the dust. All right, next step is let's blend in the sky. I'm going to turn the sky layer on. And in order to blend in the sky, you kind of want to make sure that the horizon lines match. And if you look, there's a big difference between these two. The horizon on this one is way down here at the bottom. Down on the waves, it's about the middle of the image. So in order for that to line up, I need to move the sky up. I'm going to use the transform tool here at the top. I'm just going to select the layer. I'm just going to move it up. Now, to help me make sure that the horizons line up, I'll just turn down the opacity of that upper layer so that I can see the horizon and the rocks. And I kind of need to tuck these rocky headlands just underneath, just like that. So the horizons are close. They don't match up perfectly, but just enough that they'll fit in there. There we go. I'll apply that and turn my opacity back up. The next step is to blend those two layers together. And I'm going to do that using the masking bug. The masking bug is a flexible gradient tool that allows you to blend layers together and control exactly how quickly they blend and where they blend at. So the hard line in the middle is the middle of the transition and then these feather lines control how quickly it transitions. Let me turn on a mask view so you can see what this looks like. There we go. So you can see we're working on the upper layer. Anything that's dark we're hiding, anything that's white we're showing. There we go. You can blend those two together and pick just how quickly they blend. So it gives me a nice natural transition. I kind of like that little bit of light color on the horizon. It kind of helps draw the eye to the background. So I'm going to leave it a little lighter at the bottom. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Now, the next step is to put the rock in. I'm going to put that rock in right over here and kind of make that our center of interest for the shot. I'm going to just turn the rock layer on. Now, first off, it's way too big. I zoomed in so I could get detail on the rock, but I don't need, need it nearly as big for this shot. So I'm going to use the Trim tool. The Trim tool that just lets me cut off the stuff in that I don't want. There we go. Cool. Now we've trimmed that down. The next step is to put it into position. I'm going to use the Transform tool again. I'm just going to grab the edges. If I hold down the Shift key while I move it, it'll lock its proportions. And we're going to throw it here and make it pretty small. And you notice it's a little crooked too, so I'm just going to twist it so that it's not crooked. And I'm going to put it down into the water just a little bit. I kind of want the waves to wrap around it. There we go. Cool. All right, 
now. We just need to get rid of the sky and the water that surround the rock so that it blends in correctly. I'm going to do that with the quick mask tool. Let me zoom in a couple steps here so you can see this as it works. With the quick mask tool, all I do is I just paint over the sky and it automatically removes it. Same thing with the waves in the foreground. I'm just going to paint that right across the waves at the bottom and it paints them away. So the little guy stuck right there. There we go. Now that's done a pretty good job, but you noticed there's just a tiny little bit of a light colored edge around it. And that's actually caused by the background being so much brighter in that original image. I'm going to use the chisel tool. And I'm just going to run the chisel tool right along that edge. And that's just going to shave off just a pixel along the edge of the rock so that it blends in and looks realistic. I'll do the same thing with the blur tool along the bottom just to blend in the mask on the waves so that the waves kind of blend in on the bottom of the rock and look a bit more natural. All, right. All I have left is this one little pocket right in here. I'll use the masking brush with a perfect brush option turned on and I'll just paint right through there just to clean up that one little pocket that remains. There we go. Let's zoom back out. And there we go. We've created our image. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to create a merged composite so that it now acts like a single image. I can do that by going up to the layer menu and saying new stamped layer. That creates a new layer on top of these three layers where everything is merged together. This kind of gives me the best of both worlds. I can work on this one layer and affect everything at once, but I can always turn it off and go back and rework on the three layers that made it up. I'm also going to convert this one to a smart layer. That now allows me to readjust my changes that I make in any of the modules in the suite. Let's go to Perfect Enhance and we're just going to correct the color and the contrast. There we go. I'm going to start off just by bringing the white levels up. If I hold down the J key on my keyboard it lets me see the white clipping. You can see up in the sky where it starts to turn red. That means the whites are too bright so I'm going to bring those just to the edge of real white. I'll do the same thing with the black slider. Bring that down until I get just to the edge of real blacks. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if I really want it quite that dark. There we go. Like so. I'll bring the brightness slider up to taste. Maybe add a little bit of detail to it. And then let's fix the color. And to correct the color, I'm just going to use the dropper tool and I'll just click in the waves. There we go. Now my water is nice and clean white. You can then fine tune it to taste a little bit as well. I think I want it to be just a little bit more warm than that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. You notice a couple little dust spots on my horizon. I'll just use the retouch brush again to get rid of those couple little dust spots up here in the sky. There we go. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's before and there's after. Let's apply those results. And there we go. Back in perfect layers. You notice on our smart layer that we created, perfect enhance hangs right on the bottom of it. And I can double click on that to go back in and make adjustments later. All right. Thanks for watching.